My name is Dave Taylor. I'm a product manager for Temperature Equipment Corporation. One of my products is infrared, and what we're going to be doing today is shooting a follow-up to my basics of infrared that I shot about 18 months ago. We're coming to you from a TEC warehouse today because actually we decided to use high intensity when we had the choice of taking out or replacing a makeup air unit, a direct fired makeup air unit, because of the first cost, the energy savings, and the payback. Okay. A little bit of review about Radiant. We all know why we use Radiant. With unit heaters or uh, direct fight or indirect fire makeup air units, you're trying to push the air down to the floor to heat things, but hot air rises, so it goes out uh, an exfiltration or higher transmission losses because of the temperature difference. Whereas Radiant, all the heat is heating up items. So it's a more efficient type of heat and you can use less. Also some of the other advantages, uh, no dust swirls or no drafts. A lot of times in manufacturing facilities, uh, you don't want to have a lot of dust swirls or drafts, so you tend to use uh, infrared. It's a better choice. Uh, faster recovery times with high intensity since the units are a lot hotter. Uh, let's say when you open up a dock door, uh, the recovery period can be as short as 60 seconds. And also no mechanical room required. So if you're fighting for space in an area, uh, you don't have to set aside space for a mechanical room. Now, some of the others, easy, silent operation, you know, we, we've covered those before. Uh, one of the new formulas or concepts I'm going to introduce is this concept of comfort temperature. Um, we all know that infrared works off of uh, heating things instead of air. Well, you have an ambient temperature, that's the TA, and then you have an, also a radiant temperature. That's what it feels like on your skin. So the average of those two equals comfort temperature. Now I want you to remember this formula because this comes into play a little bit later on. Uh, ASHRAE just introduced its new standard 1330. Uh, all manufacturers are required to rate their units per ASHRAE standard 1330 and this is published by the, at the end of 2015. Uh, this came from another study, uh, excuse me, another standard, an ANSI standard that was developed in Europe uh, because they uh, have been using high intensity a lot longer. So every manufacturer should have this standard. And the way a standard works is it sets up uh, a sear, if you want to call it that in the residential applications. It takes this gross radiant coefficient and it's established by setting up a grid pattern uh, and then monitoring the temperature radiant uh, off of each of those four inch by four inch grids. And it comes up with a gross radiant, gross radiant coefficient. And you can see uh, anything under 35%, which is the industry standard, it gives an infrared factor of 7. Anything above 70%, and it gives an infrared factor of 15. And that comes into play with this slide right here. You can see a standard uh, a unit heater uh, with the AFU of 80 or 82%. And if I have a calculated heat loss of a million BTUs, because of that 80%, uh, we have to figure out, or we have to use uh, inputs of a million two hundred and fifty thousand. And you can see this orange area up here. That means a lot of the air, a lot of the heat, is going up toward the ceiling. So in order to get two hundred and fifty thousand BTUs down to the floor level at an ambient temperature of seventy degrees, you have to have inputs of a million two fifty. Well, with the standard, the industry standard of thirty-five percent radiant on high intensity. Here, you can reduce that by 15%. ASHRAE says you can reduce the load by 15%. So you're only selecting input of 850,000. And you get uh, quite a bit more down at the floor level. Now, with uh, high intensity, I'm sorry, low intensity, you can also specify 850,000. And the industry standard there is 35%. But you move up to the higher intensity radiant, and that gross radiant factor is 62%. That way, more heat gets down to the floor at a lower air temperature. So now you only have to have 725,000 BTU input. And you can keep the air temperature at 58 degrees because of that comfort temperature formula, which is the ambient temperature and the radiant temperature. That average, you can keep the air, uh, you can set the thermostat down 58 degrees. You move a little higher with the high intensity now of 67% gross radiant factor. Now you only have to have 700,000 input. And if you move to the highest radiant factor, this 81%, now you can size the, the uh, capacity at 585,000 input 
with the 55 degree air temperature and you get 474 down to the floor where you need it and there's very little uh, accumulation up at the uh, ceiling and also the high intensity is direct vent so you will have to have some sort of mechanical exhaust but you don't have a flu that you're sizing so now you can save on uh, equipment costs, you can save on installation costs while you're saving on energy costs. So what that means is if you have one of these high intensity units with an infrared factor of 15% that gives you 160,000, you'd have to have two of the standard high intensity radiant um, infrared units to make the same input capacity and get the same temperature. So this is what it looks like. The industry standard from the dash rate 1330 is 35%. Typically, the high intensity in the industry is 35 to 40%. The uh, Schwank units, uh, the highest tubular one they had is 62%. And this is their super Schwank, which is 81%. So we, you have an increase in energy savings as you go up with the radiant efficiency. These are the different types. This is the super Schwank. This is the high intensity. Uh, these are all the three different types of high intensity. This is the one that uh, we have at our TEC facility here. Now where you want to use low intensity or high intensity is shown by this graphic here. You can see that high intensity is good for anything from 12 to uh, 180 feet. Low intensity is good for anything 35 feet and below. So if you have some warehouses that are 40, 50, 60 feet tall, High intensity is a better solution for you. Also, don't forget about the thermostat. This thermostat is an exclusive to Schwank. It measures the radiant temperature, that TR. Uh, most thermostats you see measure just ambient temperature. This being black, it measures the radiant temperature and the ambient temperature and it averages it and allows you to set your uh, ambient temperature set point at a lot lower temperature. It also has a little uh, a uh, light sensor here that shuts off, or that uh, resets at 9 degrees when the lights go off. Uh, as far as the, pl the, the uh, placement, um, we talked about the low intensity, one foot up, two foot wide. Uh, for the high intensity, it really goes more off the load. So calculate what the load is in the space and just divide it up and place these at equal, equal points uh, around the room. Uh, per the capacity that you're sizing it for. Um, the high intensity heats up the ground quite a bit more, so if you don't have something exactly covered, the ground gets heated up and that gets transmitted to the other areas just like uh, a radiant uh, in-ground system. So if you, uh, you, you don't have to be exact where the placement is, you just have to be equidistant for all the units. And also the energy savings, here you can see this one is for our building. The energy savings over three years for the, the uh, medium intensity it was about 15,000 and the uh, energy savings over three years was about 20,000 here uh, for the high intensity even over a direct fired unit. Thank you for joining us today on my presentation on high intensity infrared. We started off by looking at the product, some of the components and how it worked. Then we covered some things about why you should use high intensity over low intensity, the placement above high intensity over low intensity, and also the paybacks and the energy savings. Please join us again looking at TEC Tube on YouTube for our other instructional videos. Thanks again.